Hey, what's up? Liron here. In this video, we're going to paint this lovely scene from India. Credit to my student, David, uh, who sent me a picture of this. And it's a beautiful, beautiful scene that I wanted to paint with you. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to wrap this one in just one wash, okay, in theory, because the most important part of this kind of a scene, painting against the light, a very hazy and foggy and beautiful cityscape, is getting all those interesting shapes in. So it's a lot of negative painting and a gradated wash from white, essentially, to a bit of a mid to dark value, okay? And here you get to focus more on the shapes and more on the, the specific details. So this is what we're gonna do today and now let's get to it. So here comes the drawing process and I want that to reflect the simplicity of this painting and there is a lot of beauty to it due to its simplicity. So what I'm gonna do is I don't really have to draw anything but the highlights because all of this is gonna be one big shape that gradually goes from light to medium and to medium dark. Not really dark, but medium dark. Now around the center is where the perspective dictates this edge of the buildings and the roads and everything. So let me draw that in first. We have a wall here and then a bit of a, at an angle like that. Beautiful scene from uh, India. I don't know exactly where, so sorry about that. Uh, here we have the shadow of the car like so, and here we have the lovely cast shadows by the different um, structure elements. This, I don't even know what it is. It actually looks like a rigging or probably something that has to do with electricity. Looks like, um, you know, lighting, stage lighting rigging, but uh, in any case, and here we have a bunch of um, shapes on the edge of this shadow as well, of course, but uh, I don't need to get into too many details yet. So this is where the top part and the bottom kind of merge. Now, I'm not changing anything in the composition. Normally I would, but my emphasis here, and here's the motorcycle, my emphasis here isn't uh, that much on composition. I want us to focus on this beautiful gradual wash, okay? So here's where it turns from kind of white uh, to the lightest value we have. It's still kind of white, but very light. Then we have a hill with that um, antenna, and then just a bunch of different layers. Now here is where it gets interesting because if you look into the distance, all you can see is just a bunch of random highlights that where the rooftops catch the light. That's all there is to it. So I'm just gonna start putting in those random shapes here and there, like so. And you have to keep it as random as you can. The only thing I'm really concerned with is conforming to perspective where it influences the shape of the rooftops, okay? So uh, obviously I want, for example, these two lines to be parallel, but it's very random still. And uh, I know it may be scary for many, but trust me, this randomness is all you need uh, to convey the message, even if we're gonna change a lot of things significantly. Here's the one of the probably main rooftops here. And it's kind of divided into, oh, or maybe it's two separate ones, you know what? It looked like it's divided into different sections, but in any case, here we go. And that's the main structure here, beautiful structure. In fact, um, I don't know, it looks like some kind of a spiritual or religious structure. But again, the, the everything you hear is in the haze, in the shadow. So um, we're against, well, not, well, kind of against the light, yeah, because the shadows cast towards us. So the details here aren't as important. Obviously, you could go into more detail. You could do that. For me, in the context of this demo, I don't care about these as much. What, I'm, what I care about is showing you this beautiful shape that goes from medium, medium value to a uh, darker and darker value. Okay, it's this concept that will help you the rest. The details is a matter of patience and putting everything you see in, but it's not um, as hard, believe it or not, once you get the main shape in. Okay, so here we go, a couple of different shapes to justify these cast shadows, but, uh, and here we have the electricity pole, it's gonna cast a shadow on the rooftop. This is all gonna be improvised. Um, you may need, depending on your skill, more details, less details, uh, but this is a good beginning, I think. This is a good starting point, even if you're not as experienced, okay? Uh, so just a couple of rooftops here and there, a couple of smaller ones there. Remember, the, the, the farther along it is, the, the smaller it gets. 
of these small highlights, okay? You want to make sure that, to keep that in mind because objects in the distance are farther. And here we have this, um, I guess, kind of a shed and it has this large shape that justifies this shadow, okay? And with that, we're pretty much done and ready to paint this. I screwed up the angles of some of these elements. So here we go. Now, the color scheme is pretty subdued. There isn't anything too strong. So uh, I'm going to use French Ultramarine. I want to avoid the phthalo that can be very vibrant and, and kind of awkward in these situations. I'm going to use a type of alizarin crimson, uh, quinacridone rose type of red, and an, uh, a yellow ochre. These will give me a very subdued uh, palette. But what I do want to take uh, and have in mind is the distance has to be very pale gray blue to create the sense of depth. I want to start with a very pale neutral color. So here we go. And if you don't know, use a test paper. That's what I always show my students. You just test it out and see, is it good? So this looks pretty gray to me. So I'm going to use that as it is. And the thing is, let me talk a bit about strategy as I paint. Okay, I'm going to do my best here. I'm going to start with white. So pure water, you see? pure water here because it's almost white up top and then what this will do is allow me to break in with some color and have a very gradual transition like so see uh, if I try to blend an edge it's really useless at this stage of the painting okay because then you're gonna work so hard on creating an edge blending it there's no need to do that just start with a, a very light wash of water then add the paint in and here we need to start worrying about the highlights. So let me work around whatever I established before. Uh, some very simplistic highlights. And as you can see, the brush I'm using is pretty huge. Showing you how it doesn't matter if you're super duper accurate with where your highlights are. What matters more is that you place them in strategically in the right overall placements. Now, one more note. Sometimes I do an initial wash of yellow to bring that sense of sun uh, and strong sunlight. Here that won't be necessary because the, the white or highlights are so pale that the fact that Saunders Waterford, which is the paper I'm using here, uh, comes a bit tinted. It's not perfectly, um, it's not perfectly white. That's going to be enough for us. Okay. So uh, this is why I don't need to do any more than that. Now, notice what happens. It's a gradual transition from light to dark. So I need to darken it the closer I get. I need to warm it up the closer I get. And I need to avoid the highlights while I'm doing that. This is really the, the kind of bread and butter of this wash, uh, which is, funny enough, going to be um, going to play the role of perhaps 80% of this painting. 80% of this painting is going to rely purely on the wash I'm doing right now. So after we finish with this wash, we're essentially done with 80% of the painting. It's quite amazing, actually. Think about it this way. Now, what you could do while you do this is combine it with some wet and wet um, and put in some shadows under the buildings. I'm going to do that in just a moment. And I don't know exactly what the result's going to be like. I didn't practice painting this beforehand. I usually don't, but uh, it's a scene that I don't necessarily paint uh, a lot of. So the result may not be really uh, the best, and but but what's more important for me, for you, is to follow my uh, thought process, okay? My train of thought and and see this unfold uh, live. Well, as, as live as it can be. The video isn't live, obviously, but I am narrating it as I do it. Now here we get to the main rooftop, which is actually going to be a good spot to slow down, take a look at what we've got. Use a spray gun if you have to preserve the wetness. Just go spritz and you're good to go. And maybe consider adding in some darker shadows near the bottoms of buildings. So let's do that just for fun. Let's see what we can come up with. So I'm just getting a bit of a darker mix going on here. You need it to be a little dark, but not too dark. And I'll just drop in some of that here. You see, and that gives this kind of a meaning, it's a wall of a building or something like that, okay? It's not just a light uh, area and then below it a flat wash. You see how that gives it a meaning? You don't want to overdo it. I'm not going to put it in under every single highlight I have here, but some will do. This will work out, okay? 
another thing that you kind of need to do at the same time is do these lines. You see inside the rooftops there are these shadows that you want to get to further create the shape of the rooftop. Some lines, antennas, things like that, different elements cutting through the rooftop. Okay. On the sheds you won't get as much of this, maybe you'll just get one line near the top that I kind of messed up here, uh, but not more, nothing more than that, but you really do want to create some indication that uh, it's not just a flat plane here, let me get this kind of antenna thing going on, another one here, and you start building up the sense that there is something there, okay? Now let's move on, the wash hasn't dried but it is starting to run the risk of drying on us. So we have to pick up the pace and make sure we move on. Okay, I'm gonna warm it up just a, a bit. Okay, now it's warmed a lot, so let me cool it off and we'll continue painting around this rooftop, um, around this wall here. And you see very gradually, I turn it from a very light value to a something that resembles more of a mid value. Okay, uh, and the more you can do these connections, and that's really today's theme is it's all connected. The more you can make these connections, the better. So if you have, for example, an element um, on this rooftop, you put it in while everything is still wet. Okay, that's the ideal. Um, you really want to keep things moving and flowing at this stage. Uh, there is a pretty significant shadow inside this rooftop that follows the, the, the shape of it. So let's get that in. And here notice this beautiful sharp corner. That's another thing that's gonna help us. One thing I did miss was there's this shape, the jagged um, square kind of rectangular shape that really defines the edge of the roof. That's fine, you, you won't always get these shapes. Now here there's this rooftop on top of the rooftop. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out where things are. It's not always easy. Um, do your best. Let's make a connection here because I messed up the shape. Um, improvise. You see I messed up this square shape so I just made a connection. Maybe there's something here, okay, protruding out of the rooftop. Uh, and let me warm things up a little more as we get closer. Um, especially on the walls of these, some of these buildings are fairly light. This has to cut through here, go through there. And you see how that starts to make sense. Um, so yeah, it's for me, when I look at it right now, to be honest with you, I'm like, okay, that's kind of what I wanted to, to achieve, but it's not perfect. I personally, just like you experience these things and you have to postpone these worries and keep going with the wash because you can't stop, okay? This is watercolor, you can't really stop. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's the reality of the medium you cho chose to work with, so you have to kind of suck it up and um, keep going. See where it leads you. See if you continue to feel like something is not working. And if you do, try and fix it, and that's fine. Um, but you have to allow it, the, the, give it a chance of seeing what the end result is like. Like never, ever, ever, I always say this, never give up on a painting. That's the worst thing you can do because it can, first it can start a habit of giving up on paintings. You don't want to do that. Um, because then how do you know when to give up? You know, don't trust that sense because you won't know, that's the problem. Uh, and second, uh, you'll just miss out on a lot of experience you could have earned had you not given up. Okay, so um, be sure to continue, even if it doesn't feel like it's connecting. Uh, it's just kind of a, a um, part and parcel of what it means to paint in watercolor, uh, funny enough. Uh, now here is the edge of a very important shape. So I want to make sure that I show it adequately and I'm keeping a lot of things interest, interesting in it. So a lot of different shadows that cast from it, um, a lot of different random and interesting shapes, kind of lost some of the highlights I planned there, but that's fine. Uh, this goes kind of around here. Now here's the, there's this important car highlight. There are a bunch of elements on the rooftop here. Had I been more accurate, they would have probably read a little better, but uh, I don't know, this is a small piece. I don't want to get too uh, perfectionistic here. I'm cooling it off near these shadows. I do need to darken it. Because if you look at the reference, uh, the shadows are a little darker than the walls. 
Uh, and I think that's an effect that's worth trying to recreate here. So the shadows under the, the walls, this is a wall, the shadow under it is a little darker. Okay, so I'm just trying to get that effect in. It will make the wall pop a little more. Also, there are some shadows on the wall. There's this archway I put here. So you wanna get all of these uh, small details in. This is the car, shadow cast by the car. And because of the nature of how I defined this piece, it ends up that this road is white, just like the rooftops, which I'm fine with, okay? Um, let's see what we've got here. Pretty heavy shadow under this shed's rooftop. This goes around here. This builds towards this cast shadow that I'm gonna lighten up because it's the edge of the shape and it seems like the shadow gets lighter in the reference. And try and look at this as abstract shapes, just like I taught you when it comes to portraits. Uh, that's how you, I think the healthiest way of looking at it, really. I'm gonna add in a couple of these uh, random details on the rooftop, kind of like that. I'm gonna add some cast shadows here, like so. Now, sometimes it is beneficial to, and I'm, I'm just defining the shape of this object, sometimes it is beneficial to darken the bottom part of the painting. I'm gonna do that in reverse, work from bottom to top, and hopefully that'll make sense. But I do want to darken some of these elements here. So we have this uh, shape, because I want it to really show why there's this cast shadow. Same goes for this shape, okay? I'm doing it wet and wet, that's fine. Uh, doing some wet and wet under the highlights can really help uh, define their shape. So you can try and do that, get rid of some of the paint and just continue. See, um, I could go back here and make this a little darker yet again. Make this wall to the side of this small shed a little darker yet again. Um, like so, and I think with that we're pretty much good here. Again, nothing perfect. Uh, I could start adding in some windows to the buildings. Let's make them a little lighter. Um, like so just a couple of, you see how these windows really give it some depth. You could do this um, once it's dry. I do want to try making the most out of some of these wet areas, okay? There's a deeper shadow here, a bit of a shadow under there, a bit of this here, a bit of this there. Just looking at it and even randomly adding some details here and there, some cast shadows. Uh, some chimneys, you know, whatever it is that will help define the shapes of these different elements. Shadows under highlights tend to look good, so I'm doing a bit of that. A bit of windows here, and notice how this was just one layer, and hopefully it starts to make sense, okay? Now let's do this. Let's turn it upside down, okay? And by the way, this is really nice. Uh, and just do a warm wash starting from top to bottom. So let me go like this. Let's pull out some more red here. I feel like there isn't really any color here, so let's balance it out with this corner. We don't have to, but I thought it would be cool. And then what we can do is we'll just soften this edge, but then if you really want to just purely soften it, you just take your spray gun once again, just watch out for what you already put in and kind of let it flow in some areas, some select areas. Then if you want to increase the, um, the angle of paper, you'll get a bit of a better flow. Now, it's very hard to blend these away. So what I would recommend you do is you grab a piece of toilet paper and look what I'm doing. All I'm doing is going over them, okay? And hopefully we'll get, so we smeared some of the paint, but that's fine. If we turn it upside down, you see, we got that smooth transition, okay? Which is what I wanted. This is a bit of a mess up, I'll be honest with you, but that's fine. I can actually try and lift it. Let's see if it will work. Just this area, just make it a little lighter, but that's still, it works out fine. Uh, now let's put in this um, bicycle guy. It's funny, I said 80% will be done, but it's kind of, <laughs> I think it's kind of 90% done and then it's just um, optional if you wanna add anything else. Uh, so let's put this person in, riding their motorcycle. Let me actually hold it up a little closer. I don't want to zoom in, but I just want to show you up close. A tire, a tire, person, 
And then the shadow is a little lighter, so let me go a little lighter here. Add the shadow in. This area is still a little wet, but it's, it's gonna work out nicely. And I think with that we're almost done. Now what you could do is start adding in just in dry brush to the areas that already dried. It's a bit of a risk, so make sure it indeed dried. But some of these areas up top, you can just start putting in some of the details and it won't smear because you're using such thick paint. Um, so just going over some of these. You don't want to go too heavy in the distance because remember things are getting pretty light there. Uh, but just in the structures that are a little closer to us, there's this thing we have to justify. So let's put that in right now. Let's make it really dark and, and make it pop. It goes kind of like, let me get some more paint. Dry brush is such a tricky technique, but here we go. Now it makes sense that we have this cast shadow. We have another kind of thing going on here that's really pretty. I want to get that in like that. And what we can do to get some of these things to pop is actually bring out the you know, white gel pen or opaque paint, whatever you want, and just go over some of the edges like that. You see, and it just makes them show a little better. We can go even up top here, up top here. Um, if you just add a bunch of random details like this thing that I just missed, I could just go ahead and edit. See? Let me show it to you a little more up close. Sorry for the zoomed out view, if it is indeed zoomed out. I don't know, maybe I'll zoom in digitally. Uh, but you get all of these beautiful random light white lines and it just looks really good. Some things here. There are a couple of wires running across. Let's get that in here. Just a bit of it. Um, a lot of elements here on this thing, a lot of elements here on this thing, so to get those in. We do have to justify the kind of uh, horizontal shapes here, so let's do that. And I think I'm gonna call this one done. Uh, it's highly atmospheric. Here's, by the way, another thing you can do. You see these, this beautiful antenna? We could try and add that in with a very wet wash. Let me make sure it's not too dark. This is a little too dark. Let's take a bit of water. Let's try it out. If we just add in this antenna here, you see like that, and notice how it just gives it some more depth, and then I can add a bit of darkness next to it. You see, and it creates this interesting separation. I don't wanna go overboard, so I'm just grabbing a bit of water, and I'm blending that right into what I already have. Blending is hard, so, you know, if don't be too hard on yourself if it's hard, if you don't get it right. I'm actually gonna use, again, the, this trick to blend off this edge and to perhaps blend off this edge and blend off this edge. But now you get a bit of um, an interesting thing going through into the, the depth here. See, just an interesting element to have. This is pretty much done. Uh, I think it's a good time to uh, wrap it up. Um, and let's do that face to face. So I hope you enjoyed this video and seeing this process unfold with me. Again, I said 80%. What ends up happening is that it was 90% done as soon as we finished this wash. So this is how a scene that looks incredibly complex in the beginning turns into something very simple. You saw the drawing stage, you saw how simple of a manifestation I created of it because that's what matters to me here. Okay, again, different styles, different strokes. If you're into showing different details, you do it your way. I'm just giving you my way and how I approach this. Doing it larger, I would give more thoughts, uh, more thought to where I put the highlights in, um, the different shapes that are created, especially in this area. But this is such a small piece that I think what, what matters more than the details is the flow. But if you work on a larger one, obviously you'd, you'd wanna be a little more careful here. This is why I love smaller pieces. You can focus on the, the main thing with watercolor, which is what I love the most, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this one. I wanna remind you, if you're struggling with watercolor, be sure to check out my frustration-free watercolor course. The link is always in the description box below. I think it really solves that problem. It shows you how to simplify exactly in this kind of a way so that every scene you look at that is incredibly complex, you'll learn how to deal with it in a better way. And uh, just simplification is something I wanna deal with a lot um, in, the, in the upcoming weeks and months, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this one. I will see you again in the next vid real soon.